Hi, this is Peter from Wham Bam, and today I'm going to try to give you guys the definitive guide for installing a Wham Bam flexible build system on your resin printer. So, one of the first things that I do want to discuss is creating or adjusting your Z limit height. So, to understand what I'm talking about, when we finally add the flexible build system to your build head, you're going to have about 2.6 millimeters added between magnet and flexi plate. Okay, and in order for your machine not to drive the whole head into your screen, we need to adjust the Z limit on the machine. There's a few ways to do it, and I'll go over those different ways. On our website, we have some of the most popular machines and a description of whether you need to print a space or not. The reason why I'm doing this step first is if you only have one printer and you need to print a spacer, now is the time to do it before you install your wham bam and find out it's too late. So, first of all, let's talk about the easy ones. The machines that have the head leveling screws with a giant gap above them, meaning you could easily raise that up more than 2.6 millimeters, let's say three or more, the thickness of this packet above, that has plenty of room for adjustment and you're not going to need any spacer at all okay so for our frozen sonic mini 4k there is no reason to print a spacer or to do anything other than to loosen the screws and level the bed next thing for us to understand is how to locate our optical z limit switch and the interceptor arm for each machine so if we look inside of each machine i'll start with the epax x1 i'll give you a few different examples with the machines i have here there is an optical switch down at the bottom here, and that has a little opening in the top, a little slit. And when the interceptor arm passes through that, that tells it that it's at the zero point or at the home point. And the interceptor arm on the X1 is actually mounted on the side here. It's a little flange sticking out like that, and it goes in like this. Um, on the Frozen, we've got a hole here, and inside of there is the same optical switch and you've got an arm mounted on the left side of the build head. On the Mars, the Elegoo Mars, you've got the interceptor switch hidden inside of the extrusion back there, and you've got this arm mounted to the bottom of the build head and a flange going down this way. So when it's mounted to the bottom of a build head, you only need to put a spacer between the original plate and the build head which is 2.6 millimeters. So you can make this yourself. You could use washers or nuts if you want to, or you could get one from our website and print it out. Um, that's a simple fix. For some other machines, there are already models of these lever arms, which have been created with 2.6 millimeters of extra distance here. Um, and the same thing for the Epex. This is a, a little lever arm that's been printed with 2.6 millimeters. So, you have the two solutions of underneath or printing a new arm. And the last case is some of them have a metal arm that's not really removable or adjustable. All you have to do is put a little cuff over the end that extends it down the extra 2.6 millimeters. So between being able to adjust the, the head level screws or adjust the interceptor arm, you're able to get your Z to set when you home. So I talked about this first because if you need it for your machine and you only have one 3D printer, you're gonna to wanna to print that first. Okay, so today as an example, we're gonna be mounting um, the magnet to the Mars build head. But let's start talking a little bit about what we need to do to mount the magnet here. And too many people under evaluate the, the need to do this process the right way and cleanly. So, we use authentic 3M industrial grade adhesives on our magnets, and we chose adhesives specifically with 3M engineers, which will resist the chemicals in your 3D printing resins and your alcohols very well. These 3M adhesives bond very well with clean metal. They are not great with any contaminated metals or plastics or anything else. Uh, there are other glues that stick well on dirty surfaces, but they don't have the resistance to the chemicals in resin printing. So for that reason, we need to follow a really strict process to get your build plate ready for your magnet. It doesn't matter whether it's used or new, both have their own issues. If you have a brand new build head, 
and you don't prepare this correctly, that build head comes with machining oils and fluids from the factory and grease and fingerprints and stuff. And if you don't get them off that surface, you're not gonna get a good bond. If you have a print head that's been used, not only do you have the possibility of having liquid resin in the pores, but you also have the possibility that some of the resin's been cured into the metal every time that the screen's flashing on it and you've got cured resin in the pores. So rather than the 3M bonding to metal, it's trying to bond to a resin and that's not gonna let it. So the process is easy, but it needs to be thorough. The first thing you wanna do is clean your, your build head completely, very, very well. So I've cleaned this one thoroughly with some paper towel, fresh alcohol. By the way, when I say paper towel and alcohol, I'm not talking about wipes, uh, like nurses wipes or something. I'm not talking about shop rags and sponges and old dirty stuff. All that stuff kind of just takes the dirt and redeposits it down while you're doing it. I always use um, isopropyl alcohol. I'll usually just get big jars because it's difficult in COVID times to get alcohol. So I'll get five of these at a time and they'll last me a long time. Uh, you can get them isopropyl alcohol at your pharmacy or wherever you like, but I tend to get very large containers of it. So I wash it down, I'll wipe it down. And then the last thing that I do suggest you do is sit it for 30 minutes in an alcohol bath. And the reason why is we really want anything that's on the top that, to come off that's on the sides if you have a deep enough bath, you could submerge the whole thing. We don't want anything when we're preparing the rest of this plate to transfer back down to the bottom. So sit in an alcohol bath. If it's so flat, you might want to prop it up a little so the alcohol gets to the bottom of it. Let it sit there for 30 minutes. Let it sit there for half a day, whatever you can afford to do. And that's really going to ensure that it's going to get clean. So this has already been sitting before I did this uh, video. So I'm going to take this out now. The next step is to dry it, of course, which is simple. And then what we wanna do is we wanna sand the bottom of the build plate. The reason why we're sanding the bottom of the build plate is it's going to take off a small layer of the top of the metal. And that's going to take away any resins that's been cooked on there, any greases that were penetrated into the metal. Uh, if your build plate has a painted finish, it's gonna open up the pores from the paint and open up the metal. And the last thing it's gonna do is also, if you do this right, if you have a curved uh, build head, it could help you to flatten it back out. Some of the AnyCubic machines are, are known for having a non-flat build head, for example. So take the 220 grit wet dry sandpaper that came with the kit or get your own. I usually tend to mount my, um, my sandpaper to a nice flat piece of wood. I clamp it to the desk and then I pass I'm going to talk while I'm not sanding so you can hear me. Okay. And then I pass it over with circular motions, trying to put an even pressure in the whole thing. And every so often I lift it up to inspect to make sure that I'm going in all the directions. And I'll turn my position. Before it was like this, I'll turn it like this. So if you notice more... Um, if you notice more sanding lines to one side and another, you might have a lower center or the opposite. If you notice it all in the center, your edges might be raised and that could tell you that your build plate was not flat. You don't have to press down very hard because you don't want to ruin the flatness. You just want to let it sand itself. And I'm going to keep on doing this till I have crisscross lines everywhere evenly on the plate. Okay, that's pretty nice. You don't want to have any bare areas. Those lines are going to give it a really nice tooth for the glue to grab onto, and it's being sure that we have some bare metal exposed. Uh, don't use a lot of pressure. Just let it cut itself until it's ready. I'm going to do it for a couple more seconds. Yeah, one or two minutes is definitely good enough. So we've got a nice clean, a nice sanded surface. Now I'm gonna clean it all over again. That way I can take off any of the shavings and sawdust and grease that came off on that. I'm gonna put it back into my bath. And then the paper towel that I used originally, and you could see how much aluminum and paint actually comes off. So 
I'm going to clean my hands as well with alcohol. And the paper towel that we used originally does not get used again. We're going to throw that thing out and we're going to grab some more paper towel. Don't be stingy with paper towel during the magnet preparation. Okay, so. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to wipe the top first with the paper towel. Just get rid of some of that. And now I want to clean until the paper towel comes away white. See me just abandoning my paper towel. This is where a lot of people get it wrong by using wipes over and over again. You can see how dirty that is. We need to open those pores completely. So I'm just going to keep on repeating this process. A little bit of fresh paper towel and a lot of fresh alcohol. And you'll thank me when you do it right because you're going to have a permanent bond of the magnet to your plate. So that's already looking good. I'm going to do one last pass. I wish I had paper towel that broke away easily. Okay. There we go. Okay. Last pass. I'm not going to touch the bottom anymore. That's nice and clean. I'm going to make sure the top's clean. And the next step is to let that dry. Alcohol, luckily, evaporates by air pretty well. But you don't want to mount the magnet to the build plate while it's wet because the alcohol can have a negative effect on the 3M before it's cured. So we're going to let that air dry for a couple of minutes and then we're going to mount our magnet. So we have a well-prepared build plate. Everybody's build plate should look like that before you apply the magnet. Nice and flat, consistent hash marks, evenly scuffed, cleaned well until your paper towel comes away completely clean cleaned again with alcohol and let dry. Now it's time to install the magnet. So in order to install the magnet, you're gonna take your magnet out. Now, one good thing you might wanna do before you do the cleaning is make sure that you have the right size magnet by matching it up to the build plate. I know I have the right size magnet, so I'm not gonna bother with that right now. I don't wanna ruin the cleanliness of the bottom surface. Now. To install the magnet, what I like to do is peel back the paper a little over an inch and I crease it, being careful not to touch the glue. I don't want to get that 3M on my hands. And then I line it up with the bill plate and that creased paper is keeping the magnet from touching. So I could get this really well aligned with my fingers and get the position perfect, hopefully and then go ahead and push that down and then double check. And that's great. And I'm just gonna work from the center outward. Anybody who's seen my other videos knows how much that's important to putting down our magnets. You don't wanna trap any air underneath. So I've got that first bit installed. Now I'm gonna reach in without touching the build plate and getting my grimy hand oils all over it. I'm gonna pull out some of the paper and I'm gonna work inward from the center and outward. Inward and outward. And this is just ensuring that there are no air bubbles. I'm pushing the air bubbles out. I'll go right off. And isn't that a lovely, perfect magnet install? So this magnet has just been installed very well. You could take your time and burnish that down. If you've got a rolling pin that you want to roll over the top, you can. You can just push it down with your hands. Wham, bam, we make our own custom magnets. These are some of the strongest magnets you're going to find. Really great quality. Some of the best 3M adhesives. If you do the installation the right way, these are going to last you for a lot of uses. So the last step is the hardest one, which is patience. You need to let this sit for 72 hours in order for that 3M to cure after you've removed the backing paper. So this is gonna sit down here for 72 hours. At the end of that, we're gonna put it to use. We don't wanna go and test it with our flexi plate right now and see if it's working or not because we're just risking pulling it up and ruining the adhesive bond. So I'll sit it here for 72 hours 
and we're going to use that afterwards. Okay, so we cleaned it well, and the flexi plate we can mount to here. Now it's the magnet's got a huge amount of grip, and it wants to pull that flexi plate there. One trick that I use for aligning is I get the magnet down, or the excuse me, the magnet and the billet head down on a level surface, line up the bottom, line up one side, and let it go, and there you go. Got to be careful if you're wearing rubber gloves, it can pinch the rubber underneath and actually leave a little bit off center. If you've got to adjust the flexi plate, don't do it while holding your build head. You're going to set it out of um, level. So you want to just do it from the bottom. But that's a strong grip. So our flexi plate is now ready to be mounted on the machine. Okay, so the first step in leveling your machine is to loosen the screws on your build head. You want to loosen those screws so it's completely free to move, whether it's the ball joint on the Elegoo or the four screws on the other machines like our Frozen. You want to loosen that up so your build plate is completely free to move up and down. Elegoo has a little spring in there. Uh, you don't want that to drive into your screen by accident. So you want to have that completely loosened. Mount your head to the machine. With Elegoo, it can twist. You want to line that up. I have some sheets of paper cut down to size so they're going to fit in there. And I can still understand perpendicularity so I can get this right. Okay, so our leveling process is very simple. Basically, with the head free to move, we're going to home the machine. The home is going to bring the head down until the interceptor arm intercepts the Z optical limit switch that we said before telling the machine that it's at its home position, and then we're gonna tighten up the leveling head. So we're gonna go into our control panel and we're gonna to go to tools and we're gonna to go to, where is home? Uh, manual home. And you can see it lowering at lightning speeds. I'm gonna get a piece of paper under there ready to go. Okay. Okay. Nice. So I'm going to just guide the head so I know that it's not completely tilted. I'm going to just let it go and find its home. The first thing it's going to do is touch down. It hits that optical switch and then it lifts up to what it feels is a comfortable layer and then rehomes. Okay. At this point, it's pushing down. It's pushing down with quite a bit of force. When we're done leveling, we want to make sure the paper can move. This is a little bit tight. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to do that. Okay. If you had... Um, the other machine with the four leveling screws, you'd want to push down firmly with your hands while you're screwing it together. In this case, the Mars has that spring, which can present a problem. Our objective when we're done is having a completely level bed, which means the build plate parallel to the screen. Uh, but we want it to not be so tight that the paper can't move. You should be able to pull and push your paper with good resistance. So I'm going to tighten up these screws medium tightness while I'm holding down the bed, the, the head in every position, not too hard in this case, because I don't want to get it over tight, like I was saying. Now, you also have to pay attention to the direction of your Allen key, because if it's like this and I'm pushing, I'm actually pushing down on the piece while I'm leveling. So on the last tightening round, I might do it vertically, so I'm not gonna push down too much. I'm holding it steady while I'm doing this. Okay, so that's method one, and you'll notice this is pretty darn tight. That's a little bit too tight. The paper should be able to move a little bit more. So we can level it in a few different ways. Like I said, if you had the machine with the four screws and you don't have a spring, you won't have this kind of tension. You should be good to go manually. Another thing we can do is go ahead and lift up the head. Let's lift it up. And we can level with two sheets of paper. And then when we're done, we'll remove one sheet and test the level again, okay? So first I'm gonna unscrew the head again, loosen my bolts. It's kind of strange that they put the bolts at 90 degrees when we have these standoffs right here. There we go, I drop back down. It's nice and free to move. I'm now leveling with two sheets of paper. And this is a nice trick to overcome the resistance and force created by the spring inside of the Mars or all the Elegoo machines. I'm going to hit home again. 
it's going to go down and home. It's lifting back up and back down. Okay, now it's in a great position and I'm free to put down some nice pressure on this while I'm tightening. Let me just do a, a general tightening first and then I'll cinch it down in a second. Okay, and now while pushing down firmly, I'm going to try to get my Allen key in. There we go. And tighten this one. You don't want to over tighten to strip the nuts, the bolts or the threads inside the head. Just tighten to a good pressure. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up to a desired height, whatever it is, 10 millimeters. I'm going to remove one piece of paper and I'm going to test by homing. Oh, it didn't home yet. I'm sorry, it wasn't done its process. And there is a pretty nice level. There's a resistance all the way across, but it's nice and level everywhere. One thing that I learned from somebody else, and I wish I remember the name, if you know, please comment in the videos, is to try the leveling with four strips of paper at each corner. With this process, you can find out if all of your corners really are flat so we home again, and we should feel the same resistance at all corners once the home is done. Otherwise, we've got to go ahead and re-level. So, oh, these papers cross each other, I'm sorry. That's a nice resistance. Um, I'm going to show you the last method, which I'm going to raise this back up. Okay. So the last method is using your machine interface to get that extra little gap. So what we're going to do is level it the way we would normally level. Make sure the screws are licensed, uh, are loosened. And we're going to hit home. And let the machine do its homing. And we're going to tighten it down with a nice firm grip. That way we're sure it's very well leveled to the glass. Okay, now it's too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the smallest increment, the 0 0.1. I'm going to raise it up one notch. And I'm going to feel. And that feels pretty darn good. Maybe a little tight. Let's try one more. Up. Feels a little bit too loose. So maybe down once more. Yeah, it's good. It has resistance, but I can push and pull it. So I'd say this is pretty good. So if this is the desired height that we need, we now have to set the home to register that this is the new home. So what we need to do is we have to do set Z equals zero. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna find the set Z equals zero button. And we're gonna push that and it's gonna ask you to confirm. Okay, and now the machine has set the home to be at the new position. I do have to call out a flaw in most of these machines firmware, which is if you ever home the machine again with the homing button. So we go back here to tools and we go to the manual. And if you ever hit the home button, it's gonna zero that out until they fix the firmware. So you don't wanna ever again hit that home button. You can go ahead and manually raise it. And you can manually lower it again and it should go to the home position and it will use that home reference when it's running your g-code we went over a few methods of leveling and making sure that you have the gap right one is to level directly on a piece of paper um, if you have a spring-loaded head like this and you feel like it's getting too much pressure you can level with two sheets of paper and remove one and the last is you could use the machine interface to set the z height and this machine now is ready to go ahead and use, so I'm going to use the 10 millimeter increments, raise that up, I'll install that, and we're good to go. So for the most part, your printer is going to print with your normal settings, uh, with your wham-bam, without any adjustment. I do want to talk about a few different issues that might come up and how to resolve them. Okay? One of the first things that many people uh, might face is the flexi plate shifting during the base layer print. 
And you'll notice this because only your base layers will be shifted and in the end the flexi plate will be over the side. 99% of the time this is just due to too tight of a bed level. Somebody pushed way too hard uh, while leveling. So you want to recorrect this with one of those steps that I told you again, uh, told in the beginning and repeat your leveling process to get it right. If you are having any issues with actual adhesion to the flexi plate, you can do a few things. Uh, first one is your slicer settings. You can increase your base layer exposure a little bit. Our flexi plate texture is very comparable to the texture on most fill plates and you don't need to do anything more than use it as it is. But if you notice that your parts are failing and sticking to your FET rather than sticking to the flexi plate, you can go ahead and increase your base layer exposure a little bit. Another thing you might want to check is that your lift distance is at least seven millimeters. Sometimes machines reduce the lift distance in order to speed things up, but it doesn't get the model to completely disattach from the FET when it's lifting up. Um, and you could also slow down your lift speed. Some machines have very fast lift, speed, lift speeds and that doesn't really allow it to gently disattach. The other thing that you can do if you do have adhesion issues is you could take one side of your flexi plate and you can hit it with the included wet dry 400 grit sandpaper. And we gave this for a reason. If you pass this over your full flexi plate, either in linear or circular pattern, whatever you care, and then clean well with alcohol and paper towel, you're gonna give that an extra tooth on there for extra grip. If you wanted even more grip, you could go to 320 or 220, really exaggerated. Now, the nice thing is, like I said in the beginning, the flexi plates are two-sided. So if you leave one side alone and only do one side, then you have the choice when you need the extra adhesion, you do it on the side that's sanded. When you don't, you do it on the other side. Uh, please also note that there are quite a few factors that go into making sure that your, your print is not gonna fail, including you wanna make sure that your vat and your FET is completely clean. If you have some hardened material on your FET, it's not gonna be able to lower all the way to get your home and it won't print well. Another thing you wanna do is make sure your resin was well mixed. Uh, a lot of people leave resin sitting in the vat for a couple of days before they come back and use it. That resin in the vat separates and you're not gonna have the same chemical mix on the bottom as you will on the top. So you should take a little rubber squeegee and pass it around inside the vat to try to get your resin mixed or even better, dump it back into the bottle, shake your bottle real well, put it back in there. Another thing to pay attention is your temperature, your room temperature. If you're storing your resins out in the garage or your printer in the garage, it's cold out there, or you have a cold house, that's gonna affect a lot of your adhesion. So make sure you're in a warm area. Um, some resins, like Soriatech technical resins, really need even a heated chamber or heated resins. So pay attention to that. The warmer, the better in most cases. So. Those are some of the things that we can do to improve adhesion. Also do note that some machines have some, some flaws with them that need to be corrected and some of them get exaggerated or uh, emphasized when you're using the Wham-Bam flexible build system. Uh, for example, the AnyCubic uh, Photon Mono X has this tape band around the screen. This is not the machine, but their tape band is not this thin inset tape frame, but rather a really heavy, thick tape frame around the screen. <clears throat> and this leaves a gap between the FEP and the screen. And when you let level down to that tape, you're actually having way too much gap. And that allows the FEP to flex and go down and up and not disattach from the model. So a lot of users have found the simple solution is to take a iPhone screen protector, a simple plastic one, not the glass ones, no anti-glare, no um, anti-UV, no matte finish, just simple plastic, and you cut it to the size of the screen inside of the tape. You put it down on top of your, your screen, and not only did you protect your screen against scratches and resin, but you also filled that gap, which is a great thing to do. The last thing I do want to talk about is a little bit about magnets. Now, once again, we use some of the strongest magnets that we custom programmed to have this incredible strength. Um, 
but magnets are very, very strong in a perpendicular direction to the magnetic surface. If I were to pull with a weight here, you would find it would hold incredible amount of weight. Magnets are weak in peel. That's why the lift tab works. You're able to peel up an edge and then peel the whole thing. So how does this affect our models? If we're printing models right to the edge and you have the suction created by the vacuum between the FEP and your part, you could actually be peeling the flexi plate up while you're printing. So an easy remedy is trying to keep your pieces inset from the edge, especially if it's a very large piece. You wanna to try to keep it a little bit inset from the edge so it has some metal beyond the part to keep it gripped down to the, to the magnet and you won't ever get into peel. That vertical force will just translate into the vertical force and your flexi plate will hold down. Now, if you're printing massive models flat on the flexi plate, those would 99% of the time fail on a regular build system. If you didn't have the wham bam flexible build system, it's just creating a huge amount of suction force. So what we want to do with the wham bam is we want to make sure you can print things that are very large volume and flat on here. But wherever possible, you want to try to hollow them out so that you don't have massive amounts of material curing at one time. And try to also find the optimal orientation that at any single layer slice, it's not a big giant plate full of cured resin. Because that's just going to create an incredible lifting force. Like I said, it might affect the edges and the peel. And one more thing also, you want to make sure that your supports are not creating a giant single volume at the bottom. If you have so many supports and the basis of each support is so thick that it creates a giant full plate base thick layer, that's the same as having a full model there. As a matter of fact, we don't really recommend rafts on large pieces. You don't really need a raft with our system anyway. But if you do have rafts that go right to the edge, you're basically printing apart edge to edge, like we said before, which is creating undo forces on the peel on the edge. So if you pay attention to those simple rules while you're slicing, while you're positioning your part, you're gonna have an incredible amount of success. It is possible to use your plate, especially if you have a double wham system that between prints, you just, you just take off the other one, flex it, put on a new one, if you have to, you clean it and you put in a new one. But you do want to make sure that you don't have any resin on the underside, a drip that transferred over or something that was on the back of the plate. Because that could create a lubrication area underneath here. And that could just hinder the ability for the flexi plate to stay to the main. But as long as it's dry and pretty clean, you're good to go. Of course, cleaning your your build plate in your head you do want to use alcohol you want to take your parts apart i usually tend to wipe them with some paper towel first um, and then i'll sit the flexi plate in alcohol i'll even dip my whole build head in alcohol and then wipe it down and dry it you don't want it sitting there overnight we don't want the alcohol to have a chance to really fully sit and work on your magnet and the adhesives but there is no issue with putting in the alcohol for a few minutes at a time getting it out drying it off and you're good to go the one thing that i do want to recommend you can put your parts still on the flexi plate into your wash station that's no problem at all but don't cure on your flexi plate i've seen some people who say oh this is great now we could cure on the flexi plate but basically what you're doing is you're curing resin that might be a thin film mixed with the alcohol into the pores of the flexi plate and now you're no longer printing on metal, but you'll be printing on more resin, which is an issue. And it's gonna build up over time. Now, thankfully, we do include the sandpaper with the kit. Should you ever get resin built up and you can't scrape it off, go ahead and give it a nice wiping, clean it off with alcohol and paper towel, and you're back into business. So if you feel like you have any questions or you need a little bit of support, feel free to write to us at technical at whambamsystems.com. We'll put a link down below. And we always try to answer our technical questions the same day or the very next. And we'll try to help anybody who has any issues to get to printing. So hopefully this was helpful to everybody. Let us know in the comments if you have any other questions or things that you'd like us to talk about or explain a little bit more in depth. And let us know if you love your wham-bam systems. Thank you.